How's it going everybody? My name is Release Radar and in today's video we're going to check out this budget tablet, the Galaxy A9 Plus. Let's get into it. Before we get into the rest of the video though, this video is sponsored by a van key and their 8-in-1 USB-C gaming dock. It uses 4K 60Hz gaming, gigabit ethernet, power delivery, fast charging, and joystick protection. So let's open this up and check it out. All right, and I've gone ahead and taken the device out of its packaging. And as you can see, it's got their logo branded here at the front. Has plenty of space to fit a Lenovo Legion Go, ROG Ally, or Valve Steam Deck. And at the back, you have power delivery in, three USBs, an HDMI out, and ethernet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged into my TV and show you guys what it looks like. And here you can see the device plugged into my TV in my living room. And as you can see, the Steam Deck just works with it. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. And thank you again to Ivenki for sponsoring this video. So at the front of the video, I want to say that this device is currently on sale on Amazon for $219. It's usually about $270, but right now it is on sale. It's like 19% off. I'll put a picture of the sale up on screen. If you check out the link down below, there's a chance it might still be on sale, but I cannot guarantee that. And with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So you can get this device in a couple different SKUs, a couple different storage sizes, but my model has 128 gigabytes of storage. The screen size is 11 inches and it's 1920 by 1200. This display is also 90 Hertz and it gets up to 480 nits of peak brightness. The processor in this device is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695. And there are two different primary memory slash storage configurations you can have. You can have one with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage, or you can get what I have, which has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. And you can have up to one terabyte of expandable storage as well. For an operating system here, you have Android 13. And lastly, the device weighs about 1.32 pounds. Overall, the build quality on this device is pretty premium for the price, and it has a couple of cool features. I'm not entirely sure what this right here is used for. I assume this is for some sort of accessory but the device really doesn't have much going on. You got a camera at the front, camera at the back, and I'll touch on the cameras later. You also have some speakers up at the top. On one side, you have your power button and your volume rocker. On the bottom, you have USB type C for charging, more speakers, a microphone, and you can kind of see it right here in the corner. There's an aux jack on this device. And then on this side, I think this port is used for an accessory of some kind, but I don't entirely know what. And that's pretty much it in terms of just IO and overall just build quality on this device. And it's honestly for the price, as I said, it's pretty good. And the display on this device, just like the build quality is pretty good for the price. It is 1920 by 1290 Hertz, as I said earlier in the video. And real quickly, I'm just going to pull up this video from 4K Video Ultra HD on YouTube. I'll link this down below, but this just gives you a feeling of what HDR looks like on this device. So I'm just gonna play a couple seconds here for you guys. And as you can see, this display looks pretty good for a just budget tablet, the viewing experience. I've watched a movie on here already, and I really like the display on this device. However, unlike the display on this device, these speakers are kind of a mixed bag. When it comes to music and some movies, the speakers sound pretty good. But when it comes to just vocals, like if you're watching a YouTube video, like one of my YouTube videos where there's just a lot of talking and not much background noise, it doesn't sound that good. I've had a pretty mixed experience with this but I'm just gonna go ahead and play a little snippet of this song from NCS so you guys can get an idea of what these speakers sound like on this device. So now I wanna talk about camera quality on this device. And it's an Android device. You've probably heard the memes before and the memes exist for good reason. My daily phone is an iPhone 13 Pro Max, and this camera is really good, but the camera on this tablet is not great. Now, granted, I don't know a lot of people who buy a tablet to take pictures with it. It's not very mobile, and it's just not the kind of device you're gonna take out on the town with you, right, as compared to your phone. But you do have a camera here on the back, it's pretty decent sized, and there is a camera right here at the front as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures and videos with both of those and just show you what the camera quality on the Galaxy A9 Plus looks like. So I just took a couple pictures with both the Galaxy A9 Plus and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those pictures up on screen. I took one with the back camera on each device and one with the front camera as a selfie on each device. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those pictures up on screen right now. And as you can tell, the overall picture quality on the Android device isn't horrible but the camera on the iPhone 13 Pro Max is just substantially better. It just has more clarity to the image than the Android device does, which is kind of no surprise to me. So now I'm going to record a quick five second video with each device and I'm going to be talking during the video so you can see the difference in both video and microphone quality on both devices. 
And I do want to be clear, I understand that this is not a direct comparison between a tablet and a tablet. I just have this iPhone with me, so it just gives a point of comparison for the quality of this device's cameras. This is a test of the video and microphone quality with the back camera on the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. This is my office. This is a point of comparison for the test with an iPhone 13 Pro Max once again in my office. Now, unsurprisingly, the camera quality on the iPhone is better than that on the A9 tablet. However, it seems like the A9 tablet has some sort of audio compression going on or just denoising going on in the background. So all the background noise that you hear on the iPhone in that video, you don't hear it from the A9 in that video. So it's a little interesting that this just has built-in noise compression and I kind of like it. So out of these two devices, the iPhone definitely has the better camera, but because of the denoise effect that this did with all the background noise, I think this has the better microphone. So let's move on with the review. So next, I did want to go ahead and test out some mobile gaming performance on this device. So I went ahead and installed Call of Duty Mobile, Warzone Mobile, and PUBG Mobile. And I have a little FPS counter app that I installed. So you can see what my frame rate is. And I will say up front here, uh, I don't really play mobile games. So don't expect the best performance here. However, it is getting about 90 FPS. I don't know how accurate that FPS counter is. So, oof. This is going to be rough. <laughs> but it seems to be running decently okay. Um, I have the device plugged in as well while playing just to have optimal battery life. And I think that having the device plugged in also gives you better performance. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but it does on most gaming handhelds and laptops and stuff. So I would imagine it would be the same for a tablet. But um, Call of Duty Mobile is an older mobile title. The game's been out for, I think like five, six years now at this point. Where did that guy go? I have my brightness turned down so the camera can see the game. But because of that, I really can't see the game. Oh, I'm getting cut out from this guy right here. Oh no, don't let him win. I'm pretty sure these are bots. I mean, yeah, the way these people are playing, they have to be. But mobile does just feel kind of awkward, especially with the way that I'm recording this right here. Get back here. Oh. No, you don't. Okay, we're going back in. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh man, I got streaks though. But overall, the frame rate is a little over the place, right? I mean, it's jumping from like 60 to, uh, to 89. And I once again, I don't know how accurate of a read that FPS counter is. But like, if you wanted to use this for some mobile gaming, you know, you definitely could. I know Warzone Mobile is the newest of the mobile Call of Duty games. I mean, this is going to date me a little bit, but I remember when there was that like Call of Duty Zombies mobile game. It was like kind of World at War Zombies. I think it had like uh, the first map from World at War Zombies on it and then like a couple other maps that you could play. And it, the app was just called Zombies. It was like it was literally just called COD Zombies. And it was back when zombies were round based and actually fun to play. I like they are today. Back in my day, zombies was good. Man, I don't. Did any of you guys play that Call of Duty Zombies app? I don't know if it's even on stores anymore, but I used to play it all the time on like an old iPad Mini. But gaming performance here in Call of Duty Mobile seems to be pretty good. So let's go ahead and shift gears to Warzone Mobile. That guy's getting away. Yeah. Okay. Moving over to Warzone Mobile now. All right, so next up we have Warzone Mobile. I tried to get my controller paired. I don't know if it worked. Oh, it did work, awesome, okay. So we're getting about 89 FPS. This is being played with controller as you can see. I'll try to move that out of frame. But um, I'm doing training right now and the graphical preset that it put itself on was like not the very lowest setting, but the second lowest setting because this is a more demanding mobile game than Call of Duty Mobile. So, I mean, this is still Call of Duty Mobile, but this is Call of Duty Warzone Mobile and not COD Mobile, because that's not confusing at all. But this is a training match. I never play Warzone. I'm not really going to play to win here. I just want to see how this performs. But right now we're getting about 89 FPS, as you can see on the FPS counter there on the screen. As I said before, I don't know how accurate that is, but I'm just going to go ahead and jump out now. This is apparently Verdansk. It looks like it's scaled down from the version I remember. Now, while I don't play Warzone, I watch a lot of Warzone gameplay. 
from like Tim the Tap Man and people like that. So I don't play it myself. I definitely watch a lot of it. But once again, I'm not playing to win here. I'm just trying to see how this performs. I don't even have any sound right now, personally. We're just going to land right here. You can cut your parachute. Wow, I should have done that when I was on the roof. And what I like about Warzone Mobile and not so much about Fortnite, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite recently, but um, you actually spawn with a gun. So I got the Lockwood. Do you guys remember when Modern Warfare 2019 came out and this gun was just absolutely broken on multiplayer? Well, that has to be a bot. There's no way that's not. It's plates. Come on. There you go. Contracts started. Huh? I thought I knew about Warzone. I don't remember contracts. Secure a location. Get a thousand credits. I don't really care to do that. Got some plates here. Auto pickup seems to be turned on for most items. Sensitivity also seems to be a little bit out of whack right here as well. I see an enemy on the radar, like around this corner. Is there actually somebody here? My teammate either died or left. Not sure which one. There is somebody here. Okay, out and about on the field, we're still getting a consistent 89 FPS. So, I don't know how accurate that FPS counter is. This does not feel, maybe it does, I don't know. Like it doesn't feel like a smooth um, 90 FPS. Is this what I have to do right here? Securing, okay, yes. I have 47 seconds left. There we go. Secured that. Contract complete. Get some more armor and stuff. But Warzone Mobile on this device is definitely playable. Um, I wouldn't go out of your way to buy this device specifically for Warzone Mobile, but my Xbox Series X controller paired effortlessly with the device in settings, and I didn't have to tinker with anything at all just to get it to work on Warzone Mobile. The menus are still touch control, but the actual gameplay itself works just fine with controller. So if you were looking to get this device for like casual gaming on the side, as well as like casual, just like watching YouTube videos and Netflix and stuff, that's what I do. It works really well for that. But if you wanted to be like a heavy gamer on this device, I just would not really recommend that. But it definitely plays games reasonably for a weaker Android tablet. But once again, for the price, you do have the ability to play Warzone on this thing, so that is a plus. So I'm going to skip over PUBG Mobile and just go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts on this device. I do see somebody up here, though. Do I go for this? I might just go for this. But yeah, I'm gonna, I might keep playing this game and then give you guys my final thoughts. So I'll see you in a second. And real quick before I give my final thoughts on this device, I will say that I ran two battery tests just to see how the battery holds up. The battery charges from pretty much dead to full in two hours, which is really nice. And when it came to just basic tablet use, like watching videos, doing some internet browsing, doing a little bit of homework and all that stuff, this thing lasted for about 12 and a half hours. But when I did a test when I was playing games on it, I played specifically Warzone Mobile and it lasted for about maybe an hour and 45 minutes to about two hours maybe a little bit more than two hours on just like playing games. So you can definitely game without being plugged in, but it will drain the battery substantially faster than if you were just watching videos or just doing light tasks on this device. But here comes the part of the video where I discuss my final thoughts on the device and whether or not I think this device is worth it. And honestly, for the price of about 219 to $270, depending on whether or not the device is on sale, I think this is a fantastic deal. The display is great. 
The refresh rate of 90 hertz is great for playing games. It runs games decently like Warzone Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile, as you saw. It's not a powerhouse of a tablet like an iPad Pro, but for the price, you definitely can run mobile games on here if you wanted to. I've watched a couple movies on this device and the movies have been great viewing experiences. The speakers are decent, but overall for the price, this is a very, very, very good deal in my opinion. So if you're looking to get a tablet and you're looking to save some money along the way, this is definitely a way you could go. You could obviously get a used older iPad for around the same price, but if you want to get a newer device that's going to have software support for, you know, the next five-ish years, this is a great pickup. The deal is fantastic if it's still on sale on Amazon and overall for the price, I think this thing is just an absolute bargain. The video watching experience, the gameplay, for the price, it's just definitely pretty hard to beat in my opinion. So if you're looking for a great budget tablet, I definitely recommend the Galaxy A9 Plus. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Luis Raider, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, whatever I make. Peace.